immediately right before filming my dog threw up on my floor right underneath my chair so just know that the entire time that i'm recording this audio i am navigating around a paper towel that underneath it dog puke was previously there anyways here's andy hello and welcome back to my channel hope you're doing well you did it we, we came full circle <laughs> if you're a newer subscriber or even maybe just a little bit more of a long-term subscriber. This character series that I've been doing on my channel for years now started with Andy. <laughs> they were the very first character that I ever talked about on my channel, but a lot has changed. More specifically, they're in an entirely different story now. This entire group of characters, they, they live in an entirely different world. Their personalities hadn't changed too, too much. Some of them are a little bit different, but we will get to that when we get to that. And if this is the first character video you're seeing of mine, you have great timing, because this is the first character in the story that I'm going to be talking about, and there are... How many are there? It's going to be eight videos in total for this series. <laughs> so it's the first of eight videos in total, so you hopped in at the perfect time, and I'm super, super excited for you all to see this new story, so I guess I'm just going to get into it. Here is Andy. So their full name is Andrew Harper. That has not changed. That is still their full name, but they go by Andy. They are now 22 years old instead of, what were they, 17? Now they are 22 years old and they are non-binary and they use they, them pronouns exclusively. And they are very introverted and you'll probably really pick up on that <laughs> as I continue to talk about them. And if there are two words that can describe Andy in a nutshell, they are shy and socially anxious. <laughs> They do not talk to people, they do not like talking to people. They like to just be a little hermit in, the, in their house all by themselves. But not entirely by themselves, they do still have their cat. For people wondering, Meatball is still a thing. <laughs> they live alone with their cat Meatball. She's a peach, or a meatball, I guess. <laughs> but they live alone, they don't have any roommates, they don't live with family, they don't talk to their family, and I don't want to talk about why a whole lot, but we are going to get into some details of that a little bit later on, but they don't talk to their family, they don't have friends, <laughs> really. <laughs> so when I say that they're a hermit living alone by themselves in their house, I really mean that. Of course, eventually, because of, you know, plot, they do meet the rest of the- they do meet the mess- meet the- but they- I got very dis- I got- <laughs> My brain shut down entirely then. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> of course, because of plot, they meet the other characters. That's all I was trying to say, was nothing complicated at all. Don't know why I struggled with that. <laughs> so they do eventually become friends, kind of against their will, with everybody else in the story, but right at the beginning, they don't talk to anyone. They're very much independent and on their own. Get away from where the dog puke was. Thank you. Hello? <laughs> Guys, please, please, I'm trying to work. They have two jobs. They have a job where they work at a cafe. More of a casual job, I guess. And then I guess you'd say that that's their day job. And then something that they do a little bit later in the day, they actually play music at a restaurant. They perform there. It's mostly like piano and nothing else. But yes, for anyone concerned, they do still play music. <laughs> Out of the two of those jobs, they definitely prefer the latter, but you know, gotta make that money. <laughs> They have a cat to provide for. They're the type of person who's very reluctant to open up to people, and whenever somebody tries to get close to them, they really just question everyone's motives. They're very skeptical of people. <laughs> and that may or may not have anything to do with their tragic anime backstory, but we're not- that, that's not what we're talking about right now. <laughs> because they don't really trust people, and also they don't talk to a lot of people in their regular day-to-day -day life, they're very socially awkward, they don't know how social interactions work, like, at all, really. <laughs> and they're the type of person who's easily flustered, usually because of their social awkwardness. <laughs> it's them flustering themselves. <laughs> and so, you might be wondering, Oliver, what is this new story that you've been going on about, but talked very little about in this video? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's a little gist of the world and summary and stuff. The plot. The summary of the plot. That's what I meant to say. This video is a disaster. 
but it's fine. I don't really have time to re-record it. So we're just gonna go with what we got. <laughs> so the main difference between their story then and their story now, they live in a much more futuristic world. I don't have like a specific date, like the year 3024 or something like that, but definitely in the future, like way in the future. <laughs> and basically they live in this city where there's an unusually high amount of people going missing. And the only time that they're ever found again is if they're dead. So, you know, super fun, uplifting, happy-go-lucky stuff. And the city officials within the city, they don't seem to do much about it. Of course, they like address it and there's like, oh, we're working on it, but it seems like nothing's really changing. And so there's a bit of a conspiracy happening. <laughs> Some people think that the city officials may or may not be involved, and probably the main reason that they begin to think that is that there is this vigilante, fun stuff, it's Batman, I'm kidding. They come in and try to prevent the disappearances, most of the time succeeding, and I don't have an official name for this person yet, but I've been calling them the Crow. That's more of a placeholder name. If so, if I just referred to the crow throughout this video, I'm referring to that vigilante person who's trying to step in. They prevent the disappearances from happening and the city officials zone exactly like the crow, <laughs> but they also have no idea who they are. They don't know how to catch them, but basically the crow is trying to figure out the connection between all of the disappearing people slash deaths happening and the city officials. Before anyone questions it, no, Andy is not the crow. And I'm assuming that you've been keeping up with like my more recent videos. And if you have, you probably have some good ideas on who the crow is. <laughs> Definitely one of the other characters in this story. <laughs> so, I just spit everywhere, that was really disgusting. So, <laughs> how does Andy fit in into all of this? Well, my favorite part about it all is that Andy got involved in the story in entirely by accident. <laughs> it's not like they were like, oh, I want to work with the crow or anything like that. They, they just, they were a target at one point. <laughs> the people who are making all of these people disappear tried to make Andy disappear. And then the crow stepped in, saved them. But then also because they're Andy, <laughs> they accidentally found out who the crow was and their secret identity. And so they were just like, well, can't have you talking about that. The crow was just like, well, you found out my identity, so now we're gonna stick together. You have to work with me. Because if you don't, I'm kidding. You couldn't see what I was doing. I was punching my open palm threateningly. <laughs> and uh, at first, Andy didn't want anything to do with them. <laughs> Basically, the crow was just like, we can't have you talking about that. And Andy was just like, I won't tell anyone. Just don't talk to me. <laughs> then Andy became a target again, and then again, and then again. <laughs> I mean, given that there are only so many people within the city, it's bound to happen that like the same person is targeted twice at some point, but just to be repeatedly targeted again and again and again, so quickly one after another, let's just say it piqued some people's interest. <laughs> and by some people, I mean the crow. And so then eventually, the crow, and that word's losing all types of meaning. <laughs> They're just like, so something's up with you. Why do they keep trying to make you disappear? And Andy's like, I have no idea. This is really weird and I don't like it. And so the crow is like, all right, here's an idea. We're gonna use you as bait. And Andy is like, fuck no. <laughs> because you know, if people are targeting you, trying to make you disappear, and or kill you. You don't exactly want to be bait in that situation. The, the, you know, just, just the off chance that they succeed. <laughs> and so they were very reluctant to accept, but eventually for reasons that they can't quite put their finger on, they were drawn to help <laughs> and they accepted being the bait. <laughs> Basically the idea is that the crow is going to use Andy to draw out more and more of these people who are trying to fucking kidnap everybody. <laughs> Hopefully by doing that, they can figure out more what's going on. Everyone in this story has like a role, right? And then Andy accidentally found out about the crow and then just becomes bait. And so they don't feel like they have a super big purpose. And just seeing like how all of the characters like have a specific thing that they do, they kind of feel like an outcast because everyone seems so like tightly knit together and then they just kind of popped in one day. <laughs> seeing as Andy becomes pretty vital in the crow's work, let's just say a lot of people tend to be drawn to Andy. And again, Andy begins to question everybody's motives. When people try to befriend them and like get to know them, Andy's first thought is like, oh, it's just because I'm the fucking bait. <laughs> I'm just the fucking worm on the hook for the kidnap fish people to bite on. You know? <laughs> 
And they're very much of the belief that like, if they weren't the bait in this scenario, then people wouldn't pay them any sort of mind. That was like a kind of sad note to end that on, but that's all I have for the story and how Andy fits into there. <laughs> It's a little bit of a bummer, but it's fine because we're moving on to the Q&A section, everybody's favorite part of the video. If this is the first character video of mine, every single month, whoever the next character is, I post a picture of them to my Instagram, and then people will comment down any questions they have about that character. And after 24 hours, I take that post down and then I answer some of the questions here. So if you want to be a part of future OC videos like this, go follow me on Instagram and keep out keep out. <laughs> Go to Instagram and keep out. Keep an eye out for those posts. But of course, the three traditional questions. I don't know if these are going to be in every video from now on. I don't believe they were- I believe they started with Rory's video. So I don't know if I'll include them in Rory's video onward, but we'll figure it out when we get there. <laughs> this group of characters actually have birthdays. Andy's birthday is April 1st, so their zodiac sign is an Aries. Literally every single post that I make for a character Q&A, some of the questions are about their zodiac sign. So Andy's and Aries. Do they prefer ice cream cake or cookie cake? They prefer ice cream cake. And lastly, use a vine to describe them. Hey sir, all my friends hate me and they think I'm an idiot. Have a nice day! Nice too. Yeah. Alrighty, first regular question. Are they anxious about all of the disappearances happening in their city? Are they not concerned or do they feel like they have to find out why? They're definitely very anxious about it. I think a lot of people in that city tend to worry about that because of like the high amount of people going missing. A lot of people are just under the assumption that like, oh, it's only a matter of time until it's me or somebody I care about. And since Andy lives alone and they don't really talk to anybody, <laughs> their concern is more of like, oh, they're gonna, f they're gonna get me. <laughs> and in terms of their reaction. It's very much like an internal conflict between both. There is that part of Andy who really wants to figure out why and what is happening, but also they're just like, I'm just the person. What am I gonna do? That is until they meet their buddy the crow. <laughs> By far the most asked question, are they finally dating Luca? No. They never will. <laughs> kind of a similar question. Do they still have a crush on Luca? In the original story, for people who don't know, the whole reason the they're not dating thing started is because Andy canonically had a crush on Luca. And the main reason for that is because it originally took place in high school, because I was in high school when I made the story. <laughs> Andy knew of Luca. They never like were best friends before the, the plot of the story started. But basically Andy would just see Luca from afar and be like, oh my God, he's so hot. And that's the gist of it. <laughs> but in this this story, they don't know each other before the start of the story starts, no. They don't know each other before the beginning of the story, <laughs> and they meet for the first time like in the beginning of the story. So I guess the short answer is no, but also who knows? <laughs> Who knows what the story has in store. You know, seeing as their personalities haven't changed a whole lot, as time goes on, we can assume that maybe, maybe not one side feelings develop. We'll have to see. <laughs> Are they the type to trip over air? Absolutely, 100%. They're way too clumsy for their own good. And honestly, that makes them kind of doubt how useful they will be in helping the crow figure out what's happening in their city. Because when you think about someone trying to uncover city officials' secrets, you don't think of someone who's just a clumsy, bumbling idiot. So, I love you, Andy, but you're just a clumsy, bumbling idiot. <laughs> are they on medication? <laughs> they used to be, they no longer are. I don't remember if I mentioned before, but like, you can assume Andy has like anxiety because like, them, you know? <laughs> they don't take anything for their anxiety at this point. Although I will say, I don't really know where to plop this in, so I guess I'll put this here. They do take estrogen in this story, so that's fun. As a result, I've been drawing them with a little bit of titty, just, just a little bit of titty. And it's confused people on their gender even more. <laughs> Why would they stay in a town where so many people are going missing? This is a very good question. And this is a question that a lot of people within the city ask themselves. But like the city officials make it pretty hard to move out of their city. If you're moving to a different city, what do you do? Will you find a place in another city, get the house, and tell your landlord like, all right, I'm outie, and then change your address wherever needed, and then you're, you're good. <laughs> But uh, that's not exactly the case here. It's pretty hard to move out because the city officials are doing sketchy shit. <laughs> Whenever you try and move, the city officials are like, no, you need to meet all these requirements. And they're just like, can you do that? And they're like, watch us. Is Andy still?
build based off of you. For anyone who didn't know, I don't want to call them a self-insert character, but they were a character that I made that I can relate to, and so there was a lot of self-projection. I made Andy when I was 16, and so a lot of Andy at the time was just like things that I can relate to. As I've developed Andy as a character and also as I've just grown as a person, there are still remnants of that in them. But I would say in terms of like personality, no, they are not based off of me. But I will say the one part where like, if there is anything based off of me about Andy, it's more of the like adulting stuff. <laughs> Andy doesn't know how to be an adult, and I don't know how to be an adult, because what the fuck, being an adult is weird. So in that aspect, we're pretty similar, but no, for the most part, Andy is not based off of me. At this point in my life, I don't really like basing characters off of myself. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but does the new setting impact their story, or is it purely for aesthetics? It is vital in their story. <laughs> the main aspect is technology. Since they do live in the future, there is a lot of like technology that doesn't exist in the real world world yet. Dun dun. Um, <laughs> but technology is a vital piece in the crow's operation. They rely heavily on different types of technology. And I guess you could say that like if they lived in a more modern setting and everything that the crow is trying to do would be virtually impossible. How tall are they? They are 5'4". They are short. Everyone in their family is short. <laughs> Since they live in the future, Zola, please. Since they live in the future, what's their favorite gadget thing that we don't have today? I don't really know if I'm going to explain this well, but I will do my best to. <laughs> but there are these like skate shoe things. They're just like an attachment that you can attach to your regular sneakers and it kind of turns them into like roller skate-esque stuff. It's not like exact, it's, it's kind of like a combination between like roller skates and like a hoverboard. <laughs> you know how in like Sonic when you like spin in a ball and then you like shoot forward there's like that trail of blue behind you. It kind of do, it does stuff like that too. <laughs> and they love it. It's how they get to and from everywhere basically. I've been meaning to work on the, the, the design of them before making this video but I got sidetracked and, and, and never did. Since they feel like an outcast, who did they feel most comfortable with in the group? At first it was Luca. Shocker. <laughs> Just the way that he speaks and like the presence that he has, it's a lot comforting compared to a lot of other characters. Then when Andy meets Mabel, they begin to get a little bit more comfortable around Mabel. And you know, because of plot. <laughs> How many times is that my explanation in these videos? Because of plot, this happens. But eventually they do become more comfortable with everybody in the story. But it definitely starts with Luca and then escalates to Mabel because they're the most, uh, normal out of everyone. <laughs> I mean, not that they can't be over the top, but they're the least over the top out of everybody. <laughs> What's the first memory they think of when they think of a time when they were young? A little bit of a sad one. <laughs> Zola. I'm sorry, I have to give a little bit of their tragic anime backstory. It's of their parents splitting. <laughs> when they were younger, their parents split up and their dad tried to contact them, their mom, many a times in their life, but their mom was always just like, no. But their mom never explained to them why. Their mom was always like, he's horrible. But Andy only ever has like good memories of their dad. And then now in their current life, they don't talk to their mom either. And they never knew what happened with their dad really. <laughs> When Andy moved out and stopped talking to their mom, they basically just lost their dad too, I guess. He's not dead, but they, they have no idea where the other person is. <laughs> there you go. You were probably expecting something like going to an ice cream shop they like. No, you get depressing divorced family drama. <laughs> Does Andy face any problems in the world because they're non-binary? Most of the problems that they do face is internal problems, I guess. <laughs> they have a little bit of a lack of confidence to really present themselves the way that they want to. And I guess you could say that like, they don't really know if they would face issues. Most people who see Andy and don't know them assume that they're either a man or a woman. And while there isn't like one way for non-binary people to look, they want to be a person to where strangers can look at them and be like, I don't know your gender. But <laughs> Andy doesn't really have a whole lot of confidence to do that. And so that's why their main outfit is this baggy sweater that they wear that I'm drawing them in now. And since they don't really present themselves the way that they would like to, they don't really know how people would react. Do they like hugs or no? Definitely very mixed emotions about it. <laughs> Deep down, yes, they do like hugs and physical affection, but because they do have those struggles with opening up to people and like mistrusting people, they have a hard time connecting with people and getting to a point where they feel comfortable getting hugs from people. Kind of 
similar question to one of the first ones. What's their opinion on Luca? <laughs> Y'all just really want to know the tea. So when Andy first meets Luca, they're definitely interested. Not like romantically interested. That's not what I meant. They're just like, huh, you seem like an interesting person. And then the more interactions they have with him, the more time that goes on, they just get more and more intrigued by him. Cause Luca has always been this like cheery, upbeat type of character, kind of a down to earth guy, just super kind to everybody. But something that's different about him in this story is that there seems to be something underneath all of that. And then Andy picks up on that pretty quickly and they don't know if other people notice it. They don't know if they do and are just ignoring it or if everybody else knows, but they're definitely interested in figuring out what that is and we'll just leave it at that. And lastly, was Andy always anxious slash shy or is that something that developed later? I don't know if this is a good way to explain it. Like it developed later, but it developed young, I guess. <laughs> when they were a little kid, they were definitely a lot more outgoing and more trusting of people. And I guess more friendly, <laughs> just to put it bluntly. But when they were young, that sort of like shy, anxious things started to develop. May or may not be related to tragic anime backstory. We will find out at some point, but that is all of the questions that I have for you. <laughs> no, all of the questions that you guys had for me, yes. <laughs> I hope I explained everything well. If anything was unclear or if you have further questions, feel free to leave a comment. I'm not going to answer questions that are spoilery or I feel I already answered in this video, but if you have a separate question or want me to elaborate further, feel free to leave a comment. I will do my best to answer as many of them as I can. That's Andy. <laughs> That's their new story. I'm super, super excited to share about it. But let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you're excited to hear the rest of the story. I'm definitely excited to share it. Again, if you've watched other videos of mine, more specifically sketchbook videos that will go unnamed. You probably have some ideas on who the crow is, but feel free to leave your comments on who you think this mysterious crow person is. Also, I am going to mention this now before I end the video. A lot of the characters have different roles in the story than they originally had, and so because of that, I'm not going to remake these characters. No. I'm not going to remake these character videos in the same order that I did last time. Last time, I literally just made them in the order that I created the character. This time around, I'm going to make them in an order that makes the story flow a little bit better, I guess. So if you are new here, be sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss that. These videos do come out every month, and so I will see you for the rest of the story at the end of February. <laughs> and also, if you are new here, you should also subscribe because I make a lot of art on this channel. I post a new video every Every single Wednesday. I do make these character videos. Before this, I made a sketchbook tour. I'll do sketch vlogs, speed paints, whatever I want really. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. I didn't just burp. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't just burp again. Leave me alone. <laughs> and if you want to see more from me, you can follow me on social media. Those will be shown on screen now and linked in the description box below. Come here, I want to say hi. Come here, say hi. You just licked the microphone. Why are you like this? Anyways, you can follow me on social media. Those will be shown on screen now and linked in the description box below. I do make those character posts on Instagram. So if you do want to ask a question for me to answer in the next video, go over there. And if you want to see more videos of mine, there will be some on screen now and linked in the iCard for you to check out if you want. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next week. Maybe, hopefully. Bye. <laughs>